Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Welcome back from our break. Uh, we're going to get ready and started for our next session. So next up, uh, we have Sai from NetApp, who's going to talk about IFLib. Uh, and um, I know it was during the break, I was checking on um, next door, which my, I'm sorry, it's my other laptop. I was checking on the hallway track. Sounds like y'all are continuing to talk about IPv6 things, something about using jails, trying to get deterministic IPv address, IP addresses that way. So uh, continue to have fun on the hallway track. But next up, I'm going to turn it over to Sai. So are you ready, Sai? Thanks, John. Yes, I am. OK, thanks. OK, I'm going to share my screen. You guys can see the screen? Yes. OK. Hello. Uh, thanks for attending this session. Uh, today, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, my iFlip journey. And in particular, the performance problem that we ran into uh, when we adopted uh, IFLib on one of our platforms. Uh, about me, I am Sai. Uh, I am with NetApp for eight years, uh, exact eight years uh, as of this day. And uh, I'm an ONTAP NIC engineer. So uh, what are, who are we? Uh, we as NetApp are a global cloud-led uh, data-centric software company. Uh, like we have built all these uh, ecosystem of products, services, solutions uh, to basically enable our customers in our data journey. And ONTAP is the primary building block for all these products, services, and solutions. And uh, ONTAP is nothing but uh, a free BSD at heart. And so what is ONTAP? Um, this is this is a slide from our last year uh, conference uh, by my colleague, uh, Mr. Alexander. Uh, he has did an excellent job explaining uh, what is ONTAP and how ONTAP fits into BSD uh, and vice versa. Uh, if anyone is interested, you might refer to the last year presentation and the YouTube link is uh, up there. Um, so in short, uh, uh, on, as an ONTAP, we have come long way in these three decades. Uh, uh, and today we are at a stage where ONTAP code magic is nothing but a, a few simple uh, K mods uh, in FreeBSD. So moving on, uh, the IFLIP, uh, the real piece. Um, so IFLIP, so what is an IFLIP? So IFLIP is basically a framework for all network drivers in FreeBSD uh, to move the large amount of boilerplate code across drivers into one single place. Um, what it basically does is it allows the driver to only deal with or focus on hardware interactions. And uh, there are many drivers that have been migrated to IFLIP. And of all the drivers, uh, we as a NetApp, uh, we are mostly interested on Intel 1G, 10G, and 40G drivers. And our journey has started with IFLIP uh, when we pulled the SVN change. Uh, so on when so when we pulled that SVN change, uh, the merge wasn't going well. Uh, and then I looked at this change and then I realized that it's a complete driver rewrite. Um, I'm having a tough time to integrate our customizations in. And with the available documentation that we had uh, uh, a year back, uh, uh, I started the core integration, but uh, I mean, I must say uh, it's a steep learning curve. Uh, there are many bookkeeping variables, state management, overlapping buffers, uh, queues, and the list, and many more. In short, uh, I can say IFLIP is a complete paradigm shift uh, from where how we write the drivers. Uh, and also during this exercise, I realized that uh, at that revision, when we pulled that revision, uh, we even lacked the feature parity. Uh, that, that was a big no for our uh, upcoming releases. Like it's like up until yesterday, we have a feature rich stable working driver, and that served as well for almost a uh, uh, few releases, close to six or seven releases. And, uh, and today, uh, with this revision pull, we are at a stage uh, which has a basic feature set alone. And to attain the full feature parity and stability, I have to march ahead um, of our routine. Uh, much cycle, like um, uh, in the previous slide that I mentioned, uh, uh, Alexander has outlined uh, 
how ONTAP does the routine free BSD merges. Uh, so that video would give you the basic uh, uh, picture, uh, but uh, in general, uh, OS team would pull those changes and uh, as and when there is a change, uh, if there is any needs any code integration effort, we just do it and march forward. But when I pull this change and to attain the feature parity, I basically have to jump ahead of our routine merge cycle and pull in all the future IFLIP changes. And when I say feature changes, it also includes all interdependencies across modules. And also I need to pull in those dependencies. So it's basically a huge dependency tree or a graph. And uh, it was basically a nightmare. Uh, I had spent close to uh, two months to get the things working uh, or to attain at basic feature parity level. Um, so I finally got all those pieces that I think I need and we attained a decent stability. Uh, and so the next uh, thing for us is to put it through performance and see how it fares against the baseline. And most of the standard performance tests were happy, uh, but one of the performance tests that involves uh, software IWARP uh, is not happy. It sees a huge latency spike in comparison to our baseline. So we started digging into this, uh, as in why, why we are seeing a huge spike in latency. So uh, the first step, we looked into the netstat, uh, netstat output, and I see a Q and A. Uh, yes, this is all Intel iFlip. Uh, okay, uh, sorry for the divert. So yes, uh, uh, we started looking into netstat um, and uh, we found that the LR1 TSO sizes uh, are way smaller uh, in comparison to our baseline. So we thought maybe that is our hint and we started making changes uh, for uh, to match or exceed the LR1 TSO sizes. Uh, so at first uh, we started uh, tweaking the interpret. Uh, so IFLA comes with a default uh, uh, static interpret. So we started tweaking those values um, and uh, there is some increment in LR size, but the latency, we did not see any, I mean, huge improvement or any considerable improvement in latency. Um, in parallel, uh, we also started talking with Intel uh, and uh, put forth the theory about the LR size. So uh, thanks to Intel, they have come forward and provided us a change that would uh, increase the LR size. Uh, the change basically does, uh, uh, it basically stops the aggressive checking of the available descriptors and instead rely on IRQs uh, to tell when to poll for the completed uh, RX descriptors. Uh, and with this change, yes, indeed, uh, we have uh, LRO size bump to 17K. And the values that you see there, uh, 16K is our baseline, 13K is our uh, IFLIB baseline without Intel's change, 17K is with Intel's change. So in fact, we are 1K greater than our baseline. Um, there is improvement in latency, uh, maybe a 1X, but still uh, uh, we are nowhere close to our baseline. Um, so we are thinking maybe we might as well need the TSO segment size increase too. Um, so we started to tweak from 2K, 4K to 16K, um, uh, but in fact, uh, uh, there is no latency improvement than we had with uh, LRO. Um, so, uh, then we so then we started looking in, uh, digging in more. Uh, so the next, uh, we found that we have matched the LRO TSO sizes matched to our baseline, uh, but latency is nowhere close. Uh, so then we started looking at uh, uh, the code and the behavioral differences that we have between IFLIB and non-IFLIB based drivers uh, with respect to Intel, Intel drivers. Um, and we find that uh, uh, the aim, the adaptive interrupt moderation has been removed. And we also find that uh, the TX is a soft IRQ in an IFLIB driver when compared to an hard IRQ uh, in the legacy or BHD11 uh, drivers. So I have started an attempt to bring back the aim, the adaptive interrupt moderation. And uh, that is still in progress uh, thanks to Mark uh, 
uh, and Kevin, we are working on these changes to pull in uh, the bring back aim into IFLE based drivers. And then uh, in parallel in my local workspace, uh, I started uh, creating a unique IRQ uh, for TX, much, much same as RX side and tie this IRQ callback uh, into an uh, G task. So whenever I get an IRQ callback, I just queue a uh, simple uh, G task. Uh, so just tie into the existing TX mechanism for IFLIP. Uh, there was no improvement uh, still. Um, so now we are um, what close to maybe six or eight months into this exercise and we still have uh, a much uh, to even catch up to our baseline. Um, and then we started looking into the basics. Uh, like we started looking at from the software iWork perspective or from the application perspective. And we noticed that uh, the application request uh, basically take close to 10x time to complete in comparison. That is the time between the MBUF send on TX side to an MBUF free callback, we see almost close to a 10x uh, multiple uh, to get the free callback uh, reported. Uh, then we added a bunch of histograms um, at all different levels in the stack, uh, application, networking stack, and driver uh, to see what is going on. And uh, that's when we noticed that uh, TX MBUF is basically staying longer in our stack uh, in comparison to the baseline. So, but the TX path is pretty much straightforward. The application prepares a TX packet, hands over to stack, stack prepares the TS1, gives it to IFLIP to hand it over to the hardware. So if at all there is any latency that can uh, spike, it should be somewhere close to IFLIP. Uh, so I started making few changes in IFLIP with an intention to basically shorten the lifespan of MBUF within IFLIP. And uh, uh, yes, after that change, we are now a match to our baseline numbers. So this is a uh, graph that uh, after I prepared the histogram, uh, so this is how uh, it shows up for the application. Um, so if you see the red one is after my change. So if you see that majority of MBUFs are basically getting their free callback being called within less than one millisecond. Uh, in comparison to the blue one, uh, which is prior to changes, uh, few MBUFs even drag into uh, 800 millisecond or even a second. And uh, this is how it looks at IFLIB. So in an IFLIB, uh, with the change, almost all MBUFs, so this is, this is a basically a lifespan between the IF transmit getting called into IFLIB and IFLIB is enqueuing into their buffer and the exit path where it basically drains or reclaims the completed uh, TX. So this whole MBUF lifecycle span, after a change, it basically lies within 10 to 100 uh, microseconds. I mean, there are something trailing into one millisecond, but at most everything gets completed by one millisecond. Uh, in comparison to the baseline or without any change, you can see the few MBUFs even drag into a second or even uh, two seconds. I mean, I have captured uh, the numbers behind this graph in later slides. Uh, if anyone interested, we can look into them at the end of presentation. But uh, in those numbers, you can see uh, some uh, IFLIP MBUFs uh, even go till four seconds. So uh, what was my breakthrough? Uh, so the key to my breakthrough is to separate the TX MBUF reclaim processing uh, from the TX processing. When I say TX processing, it is the NCAP or the IFLIP TXQ drain. So uh, these are the changes that I made in the code to uh, gain back my baseline. Um, so first one is uh, in our fast interrupt RX TX handler, instead of just enqueuing the G task for TX, we can as well do a reclaim of TX descriptors directly. The next one is the, the standard TXQ drain path. Make it only perform the NCAP 
which is just enqueue into the hardware queues uh, and remove the reclaim from from that gtas callback uh, i mean it would be ideal to have the reclaim also retained in both the irq callback and also on the drain callback but uh, in my experiments uh, it looks like we are restricted by the uh, lockless mp ring and uh, if i have this retain in two different paths uh, the state management or the bookkeeping variables are getting uh, basically confused or screwed and uh, it results in basically queue hang situation uh, the rx and tx would not move an inch so i have to uh, remove the or suppress the reclaim from the drain path and only enable it in uh, rx tx path the irq path um, and uh, uh, finally uh, uh, we rely on the aim the adapt interrupt moderation and basically disable the if lib soft uh, moderation uh, if you look at the if lib uh, uh, if lib has this code for uh, doorbell writes and result status array so if lib basically or deliberately uh, delays notifying the driver when it is done writing to descriptor and when it wants to read the status so i basically disable that one and i just relied on hardware aim which is nothing but what we have in bhd11 so those were the changes that went in uh, and in this exercise uh, uh, these are my learnings um, so i mean it has it's been what like 6 or 8 months um, so this is this is what i learned in all these exercise um, as much as we say that uh, with if lib we are separating the rx and tx queues uh, but inherently uh, they are still tied together uh, that is every tx packet on its end of packet flag it would still trigger an irq and uh, we can safely rely on this one and reclaim any done descriptors in an irq callback um, yeah i understand uh, like doing a tx um, descriptor processing in an rx irq callback uh, may sound weird and not self uh, intuitive um, maybe we might as well create a unique tx irq um, and do this irq processing the tx irq processing alone in that uh, callback um, <clears throat> with the the other thing is with with the tx packet completion uh, generating interrupts right uh, we can rely on aim uh and let aim uh, which is proven till bhd11 already uh, let it do the moderation for you um like when i'm looking at the code like i mentioned before uh, uh, iflip has chosen to ignore the interrupt moderation the hardware interrupt moderation and created its own version of moderation uh, where uh, it deliberately delays uh, the doorbell uh, right to doorbell register right um and also it selectively picks which descriptor or which id it wants to uh, read the result from uh, in other words like all this has been translated into our application waiting a bit longer for the data that is already been sent uh, and uh, we are taking quite in comparison a bit longer or quite a long to even complete the mbuff and send a free callback uh, to the application um and um, uh, like i said before um, uh, we wanted the tx descriptor to be reclaimed as fast as we can in our uh, performance run experiment so you know, ideally we would want to retain uh, the tx descriptor to be reclaimed even on the tx path as well as an irq path when i say tx path in sense uh, whenever you submit and Uh, transmit uh, request if there are complete descriptors uh, you might as well clean it uh, which is the standard ifli behavior right now we might as well retain it uh, but if i retain that one uh, we are running into a queue hung situation um, and i think that is because most likely uh, there is no locking mechanism within ifli and uh, having two threads in parallel doing a state management or bookkeeping variables change is basically confusing uh, uh, i flip and uh, the tx uh, path seems frozen and uh, like said uh, 
IF lib is like an, uh, I mean, I can say mystery box or a Pandora box. Um, every time I open the file to uh, look into the code, I learn in a new one, a new thing. Um, and uh, uh, I must say the special thanks to uh, my teammates, Frank and John, uh, who have been with me all along um, as a team. Like we chased this one for almost eight months and these guys has kept me sane for all this long. And um, thanks to my performance team who stayed with me all along to run the experiments, give me the pictorial representation of what's happening um, and help me guide in the right path. Uh, and as well, uh, thanks to Mark, Mark Johnston. Um, NetApp is working with Mark Johnston, uh, uh, helping us to uh, take back some of these or few of these uh, changes back to our community. Uh, and I'm sure we have a long way to go. Um, so that that is it, my presentation. Um, if you have any questions or thoughts, um, uh, here is my email. And uh, like I said in the uh, meeting uh, uh, presentation before, these are the numbers that uh, went beyond the graph. Um, so if you see uh, before change, it drags into 800 milliseconds. Uh, and uh, basically the MBUFs are basically spread across. Uh, uh, whereas with the change, it is mostly a top heavy. Uh, this is how it looks at IFLib. Um, if you see the histogram, uh, the MBUFs are spread all over. And uh, with the change, we are top heavy. Majority of MBUFs are getting done within 800 microseconds. Okay. So that is it for my presentation. And there is a question in there. Is this also relevant for Mellanox? Uh, no. Uh, Mellanox has stayed away from IFLib driver. Um, so Mellanox continued to be in their legacy format. And looking into the chat. Okay, I think that's it. Yep, I've looked. I don't see any other. Let me check YouTube. I don't see any other questions. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Sai. That was very interesting. Thanks. I'm glad you're having success with working with Mark to get your changes upstreamed. Yep, so thank you. We'll continue making progress. That. Yeah, and I also see uh, Kevin has created a work in progress session for tomorrow for yes. iFlip. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would be attending there. And uh, if anyone uh, wants to discuss more there, we can talk in there as well. Okay, sounds perfect. Thanks, guys. I'm going to okay. stop the share. Back to you, John. All right, thanks. So uh, we have uh, one final break. Well, I guess we have one more break today. Um, so we have a, a break um, now for about 10 minutes. And then after that, we're going to have a presentation, a kind of a panel style presentation, perhaps. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what they're doing from the FreeBSD core team. So John, uh, there was one quick question oh, sure. uh, on IFLib from Jan. Uh, so Jan, um, so this is in specific to software iWork. Um, that is one of our application on one of our platforms. So this, this application is heavily used uh, to basically replicate the content across clusters. And this is an RDMA protocol running on TCP stack. And uh, for this uh, application, right, for our use case, we basically replicate the content over RDMA protocol. And once the content replicates on the other side, we go on a flag, yes, we are done. So we would need a very low latency response or very low latency application. And we are not seeing that happen with IFLIP. And maybe the other applications, maybe they are not such latency sensitive. But uh, I mean, I can say that the applications that we are on or we are running on, they were not latency hungry. Um, but maybe if there is any application that is latency sensitive, uh, maybe they might as well run into the same situation.
Thank you, John. Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. Happy to have questions answered. Okay, so I don't see any others. I'm going to keep, wait another 30 seconds or so, just in case. But barring another late, late arriving question, we'll go ahead and move into our next break, and we'll be back for the core team panel after this. Thank you again, Sai.